Hey guys, here's a rundown of my favourite mods for Starfield. We've got jetpacks, stormtroopers and even the ability to make your own space stations. Let's go. Okay, so first up, the jetpack. This is the flying jetpack mod by creator GM Custom Sources. What it does is give you an unlimited jetpack. No longer will your jetpack require fuel. All you do is hold down the jump button to keep going forever. Not only that, but you can ascend an unlimited amount in the air as well, so you can get a great view of the surrounding area, all by holding down spacebar. I don't even know if there's a limit for this yet, you, you might be able to boost right off the planet, but I just stopped because I got bored. It's even better if you're playing on keyboard because you can make use of the horizontal boost to travel vast distances incredibly quickly. Simply assign another button to the alternate jump. I recommend the Alt key, and when you press the Alt key while moving forward, you'll boost horizontally. The jetpack mod comes in multiple tiers of power and the more power you have, the faster you'll travel. I recommend, of course, the most powerful one, but only if you have faith in your rig's ability to load stuff. You can try this anywhere you like, and it's particularly fun on planets with low gravity. You will get some slowdown though in big built up cities. There's even a way you can hover. To do this, you have to make it so the force of your upwards thrust matches the force exerted by gravity, which is just a case of falling, then pressing the boost button at the right time. Anyway, here's some jetpack gameplay. If you wanted to watch the next entry, use the chapters on the timeline to skip ahead. Next up, we have the slow motion during ship power management mod by Marley T. Blake. This does exactly what it says and slows down time when you're managing your ship. And by that, I mean when you're diverting your power between your different ship systems, be it shields, engines, weapons, what have you. It's basically bullet time before your ship. This is a game changer during space battles because now you actually have time to use your controls and assign your reactor's power. You can divvy it up between the things you need rather than just panicking like I do and putting it all in shields when someone's shooting at you. It's especially handy during dogfights with multiple ships as it gives you time to strategize and you can even use it while you're targeting, which makes the ship battles feel a lot more tactical. I also like this nice little blur effect on the ship as well. Well, it's, it's one of those mods that's so good, it feels like it should have been in the game from the start. Enemies. 
Shipyards Unlocked by Velcan makes every single ship part in the game accessible in every single shipyard. No longer will you need to visit different ship vendors in order to buy their unique parts. Like for instance visiting the Teo HQ or Neon for the specific Teo cockpit. You don't have to do that now, it's all in one place. Or to be more specific, it's in every place because every ship vendor in the game is now selling every ship part. And I do mean every part. This mod adds not only all ship parts, but all space station parts as well. So you can buy massive antennae, huge dishes, and scaffolding to make your own monstrous ship. Now I haven't actually worked out how to attach these station parts yet. They don't really seem to be able to bolt on, but I'm pretty sure you'll need to download another mod to actually make them work. Something like the ship size limits unlocked one that lets you make a ship of any size. Then you can fly around in a ship the size of a Star Destroyer. If you have been able to build a space station in this game, let me know in the comments how you were able to do that. Next up, 8K Planet by Revan. This massively boosts the graphical fidelity of planets and makes them photorealistic. They already were realistic enough with planets already 4K, but this mod bumps that up to a massive 8K resolution. If you're thinking that would impact performance, it actually doesn't. You really don't need a powerful machine for this because in space, there's not really much else going on. Nothing heavy on the frame rate happens out here, so you should be at your max FPS. The creator uses AI to upscale every planet and moon in the game, including ice planets, rock planets, and gas planets, and has even done the same to stars and asteroids. Lovely work. Onto another mod that makes the night sky better, it's called Real Milky Way Galaxy by Kazanu. And this one actually uses NASA photographs rather than AI upscaling software. It swaps out the Milky Way in the game to a massively high quality one taken by NASA. You can see the difference immediately. To find the Milky Way, you don't really need to go anywhere in particular, just look up. It's visible from most planets, but especially visible at night. This mod makes the Milky Way more accurate and just sharper as well, with stars being easier to pick out. Again, it shouldn't tax your system at all, as it's basically a big photograph. The first phase of turning Starfield into Star Wars is complete with this mod. It's by K-Boy K-Boy and it's called Galactic Civil War Conversion. This replaces all UC security with Stormtroopers, giving Starfield a heavy Imperial presence. It does this by basically swapping the usual UC security uniform and helmet with very accurate Stormtrooper armor. So not only will the NPCs who typically wear this armor now look like Stormtroopers, but you can dress like like a stormtrooper yourself if you get your hands on some. If you wanted to go even further, you could download the Galactic Stormtrooper voice lines mod, but personally, I like hearing all the new things people are saying in the game. So it will probably be something I download in a few years when I start to hear the same lines repeating over and over and becoming memes that people will remember for the next 20 years. Is discretion. Quick one now, but this is the Underlaid Menus mod by Seb263. What it does is very simple, but very noticeable, and that's speed up the menus. In Starfield, the menus have a slight delay on them, and this just removes the delay, making it feel a lot smoother. For instance, when holding the B button to back out of the galactic map, that time is now halved, so you only have to hold the button for half as long.
I like to use this mod in conjunction with the Clean Field mod by Gametism, which completely strips out all of the intro screens and loads you right to the main menu. So with the Clean Field mod, when you load up Starfield, you'll no longer have to sit through the Bethesda logo and the health warning and even the welcome message in the top right. That's all gone because we're Starfield players and we don't have time to waste. And finally, this is the 99 hours wait mod by M150, and it lets you wait, you guessed correctly, 99 hours, or the equivalent of four days, just sitting in a chair for four days straight. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, it comes in really useful during outpost farming. So let's say you set up a bunch of extractors and you want to wait for them to fill up. You could wait 24 hours, or you could wait four times that amount, so when you wake up, you're storage is absolutely filled with quadruple the amount of resources. Try this on Venus where one hour equals 100 hours of universal time and you'll boost your resource generation into impossible to work out numbers. I mean somebody probably could work it out but it won't be me. So those were the best mods for Starfield in my opinion and the ones I like to use but how about you? Are there any mods I didn't mention that you're enjoying? Let me know in the comments. As ever, thanks for watching, click that like button if you enjoyed the video, and for more Starfield vids, subscribe to the channel.